Hi, and thanks for volunteering to assist at the World Under 24 Ultimate Championships in Perth. This tournament could not run without your help. My name is Steve Baker and I'm the Game Support Manager for Ultimate Australia. This video is an introduction to the scorekeeping and timekeeping tasks at WIPDIV events. Now, I'm assuming you already know how to use a stopwatch and that you know how to write numbers on pieces of paper. But there are some other things that you do need to know. You'll need to report to the volunteer area at least 30 to 45 minutes before going to the game that you're going to officiate. Get there early enough that you can find your partner for this game, collect everything you need and then get to your game early enough to meet the teams. Scorekeepers, you'll need to pick up a clip file and a pen. The file contains a score sheet, team lists, a copy of the rules and a detailed instruction sheet if you need it. You'll also grab a two-way radio. Timekeepers, you'll need to supply your own mobile phone. Uh, maybe not one of these, maybe one of these instead. Uh, with a timer app to track the game clock. If your phone doesn't have an app, then take a timer from Command Central. Also grab a whistle and a stopwatch. Before you leave the volunteer area, check that the score sheet and team sheets are correct for the game that you are going to. Make sure the pen, radio and stopwatches all work properly and check that your watch or phone is set to the correct time. Now head to your game. You should arrive at least 15 minutes before the scheduled start time. Scorekeepers, the score sheet will look a bit like this. Use this time before the game to write your name here. If we need to ask someone about the game later, we need to know who was there. Timekeepers should remain aware of the time before the start of the game and notify the captains when there is 10 minutes or so until the scheduled start time. The scorekeeper should meet with each captain and ask them to check the team sheet and make any required changes. No later than five minutes prior to game start, get the captains together tossed to choose ends and determine starting offense and defense. Mixed teams will also choose which end zone is end zone A for choosing gender. Write all these details on the score sheet. At one minute prior to the start, timekeepers should blow the whistle and tell the teams that there is one minute to go. One minute. Teams should begin to get ready to play. At the game start time, timekeepers will blow the whistle, start the game clock timer and start the stopwatch. Ask the scorekeeper to help start the game timer if you don't have enough hands. It's okay if the stopwatch starts a second or two after the game timer. If the teams look like they're going to start before the official start time, just start the game clock when the pull is thrown. In this situation, you won't need the stopwatch for the first point. There is a sequence of whistles that the timekeeper will signal after a point is scored. These signals also apply at the beginning of each half. This is why you start at the stopwatch at the game start. We'll explain these signals shortly, but don't forget that they apply right from the beginning. They are all shown on this reference card in your folder. You'll blow whistle signals at 15 seconds in a mixed division, and at 45, 60 and 75 seconds for all divisions. When play starts, you can relax a bit and watch the game, but be ready to act if there is a stoppage. When a goal is scored, look at the time on the game clock timer. Check that the goal really is scored and that there are no calls that might bring play back. If the goal is not contested, the timekeeper should start the stopwatch. The scorekeeper writes in the player numbers of the scorer and the thrower, and the game time of the goal, and the current score. Write the letter C in the thrower column if the score was a Callahan goal. Note that in this example, there is a goal scored here. And this is the time that you would write down for the time that the goal was scored. But there's a call here, and there's a bit of a follow-up discussion. And the discussion lasts, well, for quite a while. And there's more discussion. And there's a bit more discussion too. Eventually, the call is retracted and the goal is confirmed. The scorekeeper writes down the earlier time for the goal, but the stopwatch for timing after the goal starts here. In a mixed division game, the timekeeper will signal one whistle 15 seconds after the goal was scored. Teams should have already made their gender call by now. Gender call. At 45 seconds there is one whistle. This is a 15 second warning for the offence to be ready. At 60 seconds, signal two whistles. The offense should be ready. Ready meaning on the line, their teammates clear the field and a hand in the air to signal that they're ready. If they have not done all of those things, check the stopwatch time when they have done them and add 15 seconds to that time. At the 75 second mark, or if the offense was late, then 15 seconds after they were legally ready, blow three whistles. The defense are now obliged to start play as soon as possible. Of course, if the teams have already started play, or are in the middle of running up to throw when the time expires for a signal, you don't have to blow the whistle. It's not necessary and might be confusing. Once the disc is in play, you can stop and reset the stopwatch and watch the play. Here, a team calls a timeout after a goal. 
Scorekeepers, record which team has called the timeout. Timekeepers, the stopwatch should already be started after the goal was scored. The timeout just adds 75 seconds to your normal after goal timings. Timeout starts when the goal was scored, even if they don't actually say timeout right away. So you just need to wait until 75 seconds, then blow a single whistle and call timeout over. The usual after goal timings of 15 seconds for mixed, 45, 60 and 75 seconds starts now. If a timeout is called during a point, the signals are a bit different. Blow one whistle at 45 seconds and call out 45 seconds or single. 45 seconds. At 60 seconds, blow one whistle and inform the offence that they now have 15 seconds to set. At 75 seconds, blow two whistles. Offensive players should be in position and set already. Offense should be ready, defense 15 seconds. If they have not stopped, look at the time when they do stop and add 15 seconds to that. 15 seconds after the offense is ready, or no earlier than 90 seconds if they were ready before 75, blow three whistles, unless players already started, of course. If an injury stoppage is called, timekeepers should start the stopwatch. Scorekeepers, be ready to use the radio to call for a medic if requested by the players. If the stoppage lasts longer than two minutes, stop the game clock and restart it when play restarts and record the total stoppage time on the score sheet. If a spirit timeout is called, timekeepers should start the stopwatch and stop the game clock. Scorekeepers, record the game clock time at the start of the spirit timeout. When play resumes, restart the game clock and record the total length of the stoppage on the score sheet. Half time starts when a team reaches 8 points, or possibly another score determined by the half time cap rules. The scorekeeper should record the score at half time. The timekeeper will time the half time break of 7 minutes. Give the teams a whistle and verbal warning at 1 minute before half time break is over. After 7 minutes, signal 1 whistle, inform the teams that half time is over, and start timing the start of a new point. When the game is over, record the end time of the game on the game clock and the full time score. Ask the team captains to sign the score sheet, then return all of the equipment, sheets, etc. to the Volunteer Command Centre. That's it. You're free until your next game. Oh, one more thing. Some games may have game advisors present. The game advisors, or GAs, will take over the timing and signals between points, timeouts, stoppages, etc. The timekeeper is still responsible for monitoring the game clock and informing team captains and the GAs of the time to game start, time to half or full time cap, etc. Scorekeepers, just do what you normally do. From time to time the GAs may cross check their own score sheets with yours, but yours is still the official score sheet. Any questions? Check the reference sheets in the clip file or ask your team leader. Thanks for watching and enjoy the tournament.